Today I'll be setting up a minimum viable Kubernetes cluster on kubeadm. And although everything is very well documented in the Kubernetes page, if you miss a step or two, things might get a little weird. So I'll just do a quick run through so that you don't make the same mistakes I did. So you can come down to this page where it says installing kubeadm. And before you begin, make sure you have two gigabytes of RAM and two CPUs or more. In this demo, I'm using a virtual machine that I started up on Google Cloud. And it's just using uh, E2 standard machine type with Intel x86 CPU, and it's Debian based. But if you're using Mac or Windows or other types of Linux, everything is going to be pretty much the same. So you can still follow along. So if you scroll down this page, it starts with installing a container runtime. And I'll be using Docker. So you first need to install container runtime as well as the corresponding CRI, which stands for container runtime interface to interface with your chosen container runtime. So this is pretty much like the adapter for your container runtime so that uh, it works with your Kubernetes cluster. But you can click this link right here and then it gives you a list of container runtimes that you can work with. But in our case, we're gonna be using Docker engine. So, yep. So we come to this page where uh, it gives you a link to installing Docker engine and also the CRR, CRI for Docker. But first go into this page, and since I'm using Debian, I'm gonna click this. And it first starts with uninstalling the old versions, but I can skip that because I'm really starting from scratch. I don't have anything installed on my virtual machine. So we first wanna set up the repository, and we're just gonna simply just follow this instructions here so let me just fast forward so that took quite a bit of time but once everything has been installed now the next step says to install a specific version but you can skip this part of course we just want to verify that docker is installed correctly. So I'm just gonna copy this line here. And now it says hello from Docker. So this message indicates that your installation appears to be working correctly. So Docker is now installed and go back to this page here. And now we wanna install the CRI for the Docker. So scroll down here and first we want to do a git clone, but if you're starting from scratch like me, you probably don't have git. So what you can do is sudo apt-get install git all. Now that git is installed, uh, we can now do a git clone. So copy this line here and paste it here. My bad, I had to copy this line here and paste it there. So now to build this code, I'm gonna follow these instructions here. But before we proceed, we wanna build using the Go language. So we need to install Go. So you can follow this step here, but if this doesn't work for you, you can just go to the, the official Go documentation page and you can install the corresponding tarball for your operating system. So go ahead and click this other downloads. But to install this, you need to first have wget. So if you don't have that, again, you need to install wget. And now that we have wget, uh, you can choose the corresponding tarball. For me, I'll be using this um, for Linux. AMD64 for your Intel x86 
CPU. So you can just copy the link address. Come here and do w get and paste that link there. So once you ls, you can see the tarball is now installed. So go back to this page and go to the main page here. It's going to tell you how you can um, unzip it. And I'm not removing the previous version, so I'm just going to use the second part here. So copy this line. Paste it here. But now it says permission denied, so you need to do sudo tar. And once you've done that, you want to add this uh, user local go bin to the path. So you copy this line. But if you just paste it there, it's going to be transient and it's not going to persist. So if you want this uh, export path to persist, you have to do echo and append it to the profile as such. And in order to save that, you have to do source profile. So now when you type Go version, you can see now Go is installed in your machine. So once you've done that, I'm just going to copy line by line from here. And again, I'm going to fast forward. So if you get any permission denied error, of course, you can just add a sudo in front of your command like this. So once we are done with that, let's actually go back to installing the cube, uh, the container runtime page. So we're now done with this part here. Now let's move on to installing the kubeadm, kubelet, and kubectl. So again, um, just copying these line by line. So we have now installed everything. And the next step is configuring the C group driver. So C group is the control group where you can limit the resource usage for each of your control group. But this is this we don't need this right now. So I'm going to skip to the next step to actually initialize our kubeadm and set up our cluster. So if I scroll down a little bit, it it talks about how you can initialize your control plane node. And the first one is the control plane endpoint. So if you ever intend to have multiple control plane nodes, then you will need to set this to the uh, IP address of your current node. So you can just do IP ADDR, and then you can find your IP address here, and then pass it as a flag. And that way you're specifying the IP address for your single control plane when you have multiple control planes in the future. But because I'm only using a single control plane for this demo, I won't be specifying this. But the most important flag here is the pod network CIDR. So this is something you have to pass in and this would be the CIDR for the network add-on that you'll be using. So it gives you a link to installing pod network add-on here. But um, you first have to decide what add-on you want to use. So what you can do is search pod network add-on. And there will be a page where it says installing add-ons. And it gives you a list of different add-ons you can use. But in this example, I'll be using Calico. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, go to the link that's um, here. And then in here, you can look for pod network CIDR. And it will tell you how you can init kubeadm with this given CIDR. And if you're using a different network add-on, it's going to be different, of course. But you can copy this here. And now we can come back here and do k, uh, kubeadm. But you need to do sudo 
cube ADM init with pod network CIDR specified to that CIDR. But when you actually run this, it's going to tell you um, you found multiple CRI endpoints and you need to specify the CRI socket. So we can actually just pass it as a flag. So I'm going to do cube init help. And it's going to tell you how you can specify your uh, CRI socket somewhere. So it's right here. So you can copy this here. So I'm going to do CRI socket equals to the the one that was specified here. So we are using CRI Docker D. So I'm going to copy this entire thing here and pass it as our CRI socket. And let that run. So once that's done installing, you can start up your cluster, but you need to run this command. So I'm going to copy this line by line. And one thing you want to find here is the cube ADM join command. So this is the command that you can run on your worker node to join that worker node to this control plane node. Um, so it's better if you actually copy this line and paste it somewhere. But even if you don't have this, you can actually generate a new token and then join your worker node. But I'll give you, I'll show you that later uh, towards the end. So I'll just copy this line by line. So now we're done. Um, we're almost done. So if we actually look at what pods are running, we can see most of the pods are running except for core DNS. And that's because we haven't set up the pod networking with Calico. So let's come back to this Calico page and I'll come to self-managed on-premises and install Calico for on-premises deployment. Scroll down a little bit and click this manifest to see how you can install this uh, YAML file. So you copy this entire line here. Yep. So now I have this Calico.yaml in the home directory. Now you can do kubectl apply f this Calico YAML file. And once that's done, we can do pods and let's watch how it changes. Now the Calico node pods are initializing. containers are being created and now they are all running so if I get the pods again now we can see all of them are running and you can do pretty much the same thing for your worker node so if you're running uh, your virtual machine you can create another virtual machine and install your kubeadm, kubectl and kubelet on your worker node and use that kubeadm join command to join your worker node to this control plane node. And if you did not copy that kubeadm join command earlier, you can actually, uh, I'll, I'll leave, leave this link to the stack overflow answer here, but it tells you how you can generate a token and then create a join command using your new token and this expires in 24 hours anyway so if you create worker node later you will need this command so that's pretty much everything you need to set up your kubernetes cluster thank you all for watching